Robert, how was the morning session? It was good. It was uh, quite an um, exclusive circle. <laughs> and um, a little bit less than now. Yeah. So uh, um, it, it was more interactive and um, <coughs> we sort of developed a new product <laughs> for ICMCI. But it is uh, looking behind every corner around and, and uh, in the discussion and we sort of grabbed it and decided to, to work on a, on a training or however we call it, it might be a, a, a training, a, a education or however, about uh, implementing sustainable development goals as a consulting service. Because the need is coming everywhere and, and, mm -hmm. and everywhere where you look around, everybody's asking for that. Mm -hmm. And um, I have been attending a Monday a seminar mm -hmm. that was conducted by United Nations, by UNIDO and, and, and ISO. I don't know if I, I'm telling this story, I, I think uh, mo most probably twice a day in my feeling, uh, because right. yesterday we had Europe and today and the day before we had something else. Mm -hmm. So I don't know if, if uh, you already heard it, but maybe some of you. Rima and Husema, they did, I know, as well as Selar yesterday, yes. Uh, yes, I also as well as Otto. <laughs> but, I think I agree with that. So, so about the sustainability, the first question would be to all of you, how many of your uh, companies do have a sustainability report? Uh, yes, some of them in my case. Not many, but some of them, at least mm -hmm. three to five uh, of them are uh, systematically uh, issuing the sustainability report since at least some years, five years at least. Yeah. In, in Costa Rica, it's very big, the concept. And there are some, uh, you know, because we come from the, from the green and environmental big thing, uh, but I do think it is a great idea because, uh, you know, I've spent most of my life in, in, in corporate projects. So for me, the sustainability stuff is a fluffy stuff that I don't really know. You know, I even have clients that are great in human rights or sustainability, but it is a, a strange matter to me. Mm. So, 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 so I think as an enhancement of my capability to deal with those clients and to help new ones, because it is a trendy topic, uh, I, I think is it's it's a good product. Mm -hmm. yeah. Having having been looking at that, uh, operational excellence and sustainability is very close to each other. Yes, I think so. Yes. And it's that's that that's a very good approach because that is one of the main questions. How do you how do you grab it and how can you start an operational work with that? And that is what what as as Otto mentioned, everybody is talking about. Yep. And uh, actually, nobody really knows how to do. And that was that's, in the in the seminar. They said that's that's the uh, that's the second that's the second. Uh, problem actually that people talk big and because they talk big they are not capable even to do small and, <laughs> and what what is needed from us is to make them start even with the small steps but but yeah. it's very difficult because the talks are so big a lot of smoke selling i don't yes. know if you're training robert if they showed how the how the globe is performing against the SDGs because I remember seeing something a few months back and it was very poor performance. Yes, but you know the, the definitions they are on the table, but there are so many definitions that somebody needs to clean up it's it's and, and to sort them and that's I think that would be the starting for us just to identify all the different definitions and there are ISO standards about innovation, including uh, SDG implementation of SDGs, and they address those issues. 
And there are many other strategies on the table, but uh, first thing would be to, to sort them out and to have an overview of the existing, because we don't need to reinvent the wheel. It's, it, I think m most of the things are on the, on the table. And then it might be the same uh, approach or the same procedure to set up the training like we did with the ISO standard to bring it in a very concrete pattern. We use the checklist for the ISO standard, but that might not be appropriate for the SDGs, but in, in, in a sort like that. And then to bring it in some sort of a, of, of a systematic framing and, and train the consultants how to implement and how to discuss with the, the stakeholders. And that might be something that is actually um, something how we can attract more members for our members and and provide solutions <laughs> so hopefully we do not invent uh an, another uh product in this session because uh our cap capacities are limited <laughs> but um, <laughs> if we decide in the board we might invite all consultants who, who would like to contribute to be volunteering to the to a, to a task force or however we call it and um and then I, something. I, I think that's a great new product uh, robert and i won't try to create another new one but uh you know i'm the operational excellence guy and i've always felt kind of badly that i don't have strong enough links to sustainability but um just like kim said what what are those small steps how, how do you do that so i think us putting our minds together as, as consultants would be a really, it, that would be very, that would be helpful to the whole profession. That would be great. Yes. And I'm, I'm convinced we are smart enough. Yeah, we're always smart <laughs> <Yeah>. enough. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> and we have Kim as the expert amongst us as well. Yes, we have, um, I'm serious. <laughs> we are smart enough. We do have experts on that. We do have experience not in the same product, but we do have experience how to develop this sort of trainings. Yeah. Let's do that and let's discuss it in the board. And um, let, me, let me share uh, my screen. And I'm doing it the same way we did it uh, in the morning session. I just show the screen because there's so many. Oh, okay. Now you can see my screen? Yes. Good. And I, I know you, you remember that uh, mind map. Uh, it's a little bit adapted from uh, session to not from session to session, but from uh, presentation to presentation. And um, the, the the items um, more or less are the same, which is good for me because we don't need to invent uh, every two months uh, something completely new. But it's better to stick on the on the issues that uh, should be sorted out. Um, now, let me have a quick check with this group, not to repeat and not to bore you with things you already know. Um, I see Mark Bule and she's an ISO expert. So let us start with the ISO, uh, the systematic review process. Uh, and that is quite short because I see Selal here, um, mm. not on my screen, but he was here, so I'm, I'm yes, convinced yes, he's still here. Yeah. Tomorrow we have the, the session and uh, I hope more or less all of you have registered for one of the two sessions, one in the morning, one in the afternoon, to discuss with the, the trainer community about the uh, uh, systematic review process. And tomorrow at the end of the day, we should have a proposal we send out to the uh, IMCs how we propose to answer to these three questions. One is, shall it be withdrawn? Most probably no. Um, second is, shall it be revised? Maybe yes, maybe no. Um, and third question, shall it stay in, shall the standard remain unchanged? And that is what will be elaborated tomorrow. And uh, Sela has set up a very good program for tomorrow. So I hope all of you will attend. Do you want to add something, Sela? I, I hope so too. 
uh, everybody to attend and contribute, of course, with their uh, experience and knowledge uh, with the worldwide participation. And uh, as you know, it will be uh, two sessions, identical sessions with different part participants. And my expectation is high indeed. I'm, um, yes, I, I, I am, I, I can say I am kind of proud that every time when Rima reports how many trainers we have, I think it's more than 500, 560, 565, mm -hmm. to every mind. Mm -hmm. Trainers, we have 132 trainers but the trainees are 686 to be exact. Mm -hmm. But today we received new requests for certificates. So we know that there are two sessions that we need to add the numbers of those two as well. Okay. So uh, that will be the introduction from Zelal to see what, what, what is the trainer community and what it is about. So um, um, I just want to remind you and uh, Get in touch with your colleagues. Get in touch with your national standardization uh, body um, to answer these questions. Um, another thing I would like to add is about uh, knowledge, development, and sharing. That is one out of the three pillars we discussed in our board meeting. Um, well, actually, we already started the discussion about that when we started about sustainability. And um, um, I started to, re to, uh, yes, to, to report about the seminar that I attended from UNIDO and, and, and ISO, and they, um, it, it, they have the same issues like we have on the table. They are seeking for some sort of certification. Um, including the ISO guys, but they don't have, a, they don't have an answer. Um, the, um, especially the, the, the African people, they say we need both. We need uh, a guideline and we need something that we can show as an evidence that we have the knowledge to do, in that case, innovation process. And, and they are asking for certification. So it's, it's, it's everywhere the same thing. I think uh, it, we, we did discuss that um, a lot of times and it's still on the table uh, and it's on the agenda of uh, PSC and we have, maybe we found a good approach that is, uh, could be a showcase also for other uh, guideline standards, guideline-based standards certifications. Um, we had a webinar to all the uh, consultants, how to deliver management consulting services in a digital way. And we had uh, something like 500 registration. Registrations on LinkedIn are not people who attend, but at least they, they realized that ICMCI is doing something. So um, it is some sort of acknowledgement. Uh, it's not what we want to achieve. We would like to have 500 participants. We, could have we couldn't have handled it because our Zoom, uh, uh, Zoom license is not big enough. Uh, but um, Rima was expecting that we do not will boost our Zoom license. But um, I think it's, it, it, it's, it is actually a good sign. It's not the sign we want to have, but it's, it's actually a good sign that we are uh, recognized in the com community and this community is getting larger and larger. And the topic is, uh, was uh, accepted as a very good and interesting topic because that's one of the main questions. How can management con consulting services delivered in a digitalized world? And when we ask our clients, they should change I think we should ask ourselves too, as the, as the industry, to change what we need to do and to do our homework. Um, we cannot be authentic in consulting our clients if we uh, resist to, 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 to change in the way we, we deliver our business. Not everything can be digitalized. And we, I'm sure we will have a lot of uh, other webinars discussing and sharing experience about the digitalizing these consulting services. Um, 
I'm jumping a little bit around just not to um, telling the same things again, but I would like to address something as, as Dwight is here. Uh, as, uh, maybe we jump to the governance review. Um, and the governance, oops, I'm sorry, wrong direction. It ha that has, as I always say, the governance review is the internal view and inside uh, ICMCI. And we have two different fields. One is talking about committees and one is talking about hubs. Yesterday in the Eurohub meeting, we had a discussion about the hubs. How can we make the Eurohub, that obviously was the topic, how can we make the Eurohub more efficient and how can we make the Eurohub to deal with the task to be the link, the, the missing link between the IMC and the global organization ICMCI. There's something in between and that's in Europe, Brussels, the European Union, to 90%, maybe 95%, it is a major stakeholder. And we don't have a, a situation comparable to that uh, in any other uh, region, um, neither in Asia Pacific nor in uh, Africa or in uh, the Americas, but in other regions, like we discussed in the morning, like in Africa, they are seeking for being linked to African bodies and African donor organizations, African stakeholders in the consulting industry. So I mentioned um, the copyright word from Kim, <laughs> the agile hubs, and uh, said that we are discussing about a concept in that direction in the in, in, in the board, and we, we will prepare a proposal in the uh, for the annual meeting, but the proposal is not ready yet. It needs to be that some questions that need to be clarified and the proposal needs to be set up. And yeah, uh, the chair of this committee is uh, highly, um, uh, you know, it's acknowledged as the, as the best chair that this committee could have just because he's Dwight. <laughs> Um, and same to committees, um, also the discussion we had to, today in the morning, is that a task force, is that a new committee, is it a task that we can assign to an existing committee, do we have the structure to react on that situation that we will always have new challenges to train or to educate our consultants and we need to have that in a systematic approach that at the end of the day fits to our existing certifications how does that link to the cmc would that be some specific cmc or is it um, part of the cmc training or whatever that needs to be um, sorted out and needs to be discussed somewhere and um, it might be a task force it might be an existing hub it might be a task force within uh, a committee whatever it's um, so we are all looking forward to to that do you need to do you want to add something to it from your point maybe just uh, just sort of in the in the higher order um, context of it so so thank you for that summary that's that's bang on um, you know with as consultants we always work with our client organizations and we all know very well in our hearts that as organizations grow uh, things get more complex and if the head of the organization doesn't keep up with that complexity the organization either stops growing because they can't handle it or or they fail because uh, competitors uh, out, outstretch them uh, it's the same in not-for-profit organizations as organizations grow and as they uh, change the way in which they work, complexity changes. So, so really uh, what we're looking at from the governance uh, task force perspective is 
given where we are now with a full-time executive director and staff and volunteers doing a lot of the work and hubs and our board, how does all of that fit together in the new world to position us ourselves for, for, for the future? So, so the task force uh, has been doing some really good work on that. We've been getting good feedback, a lot of good discussion on it at the board level. Uh, so now as the chair, I have to put uh, fingers to keyboards and, and document that and uh, get back to a task force to finalize our report to bring forward. We, we owe a draft report to the board in, uh, at the July, mid-July meeting. Yeah, and the, the other review process is about stakeholder review. Um, we had a discussion today in the morning with the, in the, in the first session and as well yesterday in the, in the Eurohub that we, uh, if we want to be, if we want to represent the, stand, the, the, the management consulting industry, we need to get a little bit closer with different stakeholders. And um, I, in my feeling, um, there was nobody in, 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 all the, in both sessions who said, no, we don't. Uh, everybody said, yes, it's, it's, it is important as well as it is important to have um, a strategy, how we can strengthen our members because we are not... Uh, efficient and successful without successful and efficient members. We need to have uh, IMCs that can deal with their stakeholders on, their, on the national level and as well as on the, on maybe on the hub level. Well, so I'm, I'm looking forward to the discussion in the annual meeting on both governance and stakeholders review. And um, um, I remember the discussions in the board meeting, they were very focused, very efficient and very creative. <laughs> Not all of the thoughts might be uh, possibly uh, brought to life, not, not implemented, but some of them might be quite, let me call it radical and, 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 and new approaches. So um, yeah, I'm looking forward to the discussions in the board meeting and then in the annual meeting. Uh, speaking about the annual meeting, the annual meeting, um, I think most probably all of you know, or maybe not, but to make it sure, all of you know that, that we will have an annual meeting that is a virtual meeting. Uh, we have been discussing if the annual meeting might take place face to face or and or in a hybrid version. But at the end of the day, we, we decided not to have it um, or to have it in a, in, 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 uh, exclusively in the uh, in a virtual way because the risk is simply too high to set up a face-to-face -face program and then we need to cancel it. That means that uh, either the IMC who would most probably need to organize that or ICMCI would take a very high risk and that risk is too high because uh, many people predict that traveling and organizing events like an annual meeting or an annual conference in autumn or early winter will be affected by a new situation, a new pandemic situation. We don't know how that will look like, but, uh, but that is why we decided. Now, the last two years we had virtual meetings and we did not have really discussions that were significant and, 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 and deep discussions in terms of, well, changings of bylaws that might be necessary or whatever. So that is for us a little bit a challenging situation because we want to have a very transparent discussion and we want to have the discussion uh, open for input for all our delegates, members from everywhere in the world. And that is, first of all, it's a time zone problem. Um, and for the time being, I don't have a really good idea that I'm convinced of is the best because um, every proposal we discuss has at least one um, thing that is um, sort of risk for a, a transparent and open discussion. So let us see, we will, we will find a, a solution, but um, for the time being, I cannot offer, but maybe you have an idea on that. <laughs> um, 
what will be this uh, the date? I already mentioned it's the October the 13th, is it, Rima? I always mix it up, but... It is the October the 13th, but that yes. would be preceded the day before with the Constantinos award yes. as well. And so 12th me, and 13th. That brings me to the second point. Please try to convince as many people to, con to, to apply for the Constantinos because the award ceremony will be uh, in the setting of our annual meeting and regardless if that is online or if that is face to face of course face to face is much much uh, nicer and, and much more comfortable and um, the beer is tasting even better if it's face to face or you drink it at home alone and um, but the benefit uh, of the Constantinos is not harmed by the situation if it's online or virtual, because the benefit of Constantinos is to make promotion, to promote the showcases, what management consultants can do for their clients. And that is uh, not done in the ceremony itself, it's done after the ceremony. Uh, Robert, to answer your question in the previous, I couldn't find my mute button fast enough, uh, on the open and transparent. Mm -hmm. uh, I had a thought about that the other night. We were, I was thinking about um, uh, the, the task force um, on governance, which, which is substantive, and, and we would hope to have some changes, which might even impact bylaws uh, in October. And it occurred to me now in this new virtual world, we don't have to stick to kind of the hub structure. You know, we have everything in place. We previously had everything in place, discussed it at the hubs, had ongoing conversation, then brought the motions forward. We could have special uh, special sessions uh, on each one of the major topics leading up to the board meeting. I know it adds more work for all of us, uh, but in terms of openness to to for those people that are interested in the topic, for the chair or the task force leader or whatever to have a session where all delegates are invited to talk about what the topic is, uh, why, what the issues are, why it's important, uh, what's coming to the board and what they need to think about uh, just to prepare them so that, uh, so that we have uh, delegates coming with um, you know, as much information as, as, possible, as possible, excuse me. Yes, that, that's, that's a good idea. It's, it might make things a little bit uh smoother to understand but my my problem is what if we have in in a in the euro hub we have we, we discuss something that isn't discussed in the ap hub for example and then how, how do we uh, communicate that do we wrap it up and send it out and then have another um discussion that would mean we need to make it twice or that is something um, which is hard to do if we have more than one session. If we have one session, which would mean that for some of the countries, it would be to a weird time, at least for some, it maybe, maybe it's for all of the countries, um, but it, it's, um, that is the situation. And if you remember last year, uh, which wasn't a problem, and we, we, find that we found a solution that was the, the report, the finance report, which was different. <laughs> By a very small word, uh, word, and and but it 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 was a different meaning, and it wasn't a problem, and we sorted it out. But for a deeper discussion about bylaws, um, that might be different. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. For that part, you're right. That is a, that is a quandary. <laughs> but if we do that um, early enough, like um, in beginning of September. And then we might have some conclusion and send it out again. And then in the annual meeting, we can discuss based on that outcome, for example. So it must be some sort of um, blendings of different approaches. OK. Um, Maybe we can move to something that is also with regards to implementation, because uh, we are talking a lot of, about the, the new e-business solution, Soho. And um, I know it's a lot of work for, uh, for Rima and Husayma to set up the CRM at the beginning. 
But um, once we have it, and I don't know, it, it, it'll take a while because it's, everything is very stressing now and now everything needs to be prepared for the annual meeting. And uh, as I remember, once we're starting things to prepare for the annual meeting, everything else is, uh, needs to be shifted. But um, once we have that, we should discuss with Rima or, or maybe we can provide information what might be from her point of view, what can we, autom what, what can we do more automated? And that is actually what is helping uh, the, the administration or it, it needs to help because that is, once we can automate many things, the processes, life should become a little bit easier in the, in the office. But it, it will take some time. Right, Rima? Actually, on Monday, we have our first training session. Mm -hmm. um, we already have the CRM, CRM almost full of all the data that we need, but we need to double check. Uh, that's after the training, because we would know what to look for. And maybe um, the first thing we're going to start with is the membership survey send it out from the CRM itself. And if that works, then we start, we move forward with every other product that we have. I mean, to include the QAC and, and that's a separate conversation with Nick when that starts and, and so on and so forth. So we're on track, a little bit slow maybe, but on track, that's the good thing. That's a good, that's, that's a good message. So please, do not be too strict in the next months when you get an email that doesn't look like you are used to it because the e all those emails will be sent out with the new solution. So they might look a little bit different. And some of them which haven't been changed, they might look in the old way. So that's uh, always in the transition phase. Uh, things might happen that are not planned. <laughs> Let's hope it's less of those and more of what is meant. Okay. Yes, 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 yes. Of course, of course, of course. <laughs> okay. Um, anything else from your side? Did I forget something? I'm asking all my board members or all those who have listened to these presentations already. That is something that should be repeated from my side. Uh, indeed, some uh, good comments in the chat from Makule, if you didn't see them. No, I hadn't. No, thank you for reminding. Makule. We have to work on 20,700 transfer its requirements to standards and have a cert certificate from ISO. Okay, and that might be a discussion tomorrow. Uh, the standard is a guideline, and so there is no way to have a certification against the guideline because a guideline is a guideline. And, and, and on the other side, the standard is a guideline for, uh, for the provision of projects. And, and some projects might be delivered according to ISO standard 20,700 and some not. But um you know to demonstrate to the clients that the organization they are dealing with the, the consultant um is aware of the standard and is able to fulfill the, the the guidelines named in the standard that is what most of the the, the clients will look for it's the clients actually don't buy certificates clients buy solutions but they have more trust in you if you have a certif if you have a certificate that's uh, but um, to provide the trust and to is is to demonstrate to the client I'm well educated I have maybe a degree I have a, a, a CMC and I'm aware of the standard and my organization is uh, prepared to deliver consulting projects in the meaning of the standard. And that might be something we certify. It's not an ISO standard. It's not an ISO certification, which is in the meaning of the word doesn't exist, but uh, it's kind of. 
like the ISO 9001 or whatever that is certif certification issued by a certification body, but we could develop something that is that can be used by the consultants. That means my organization, even if I'm very small or I'm a larger consultant, is prepared to deliver consulting projects according to 20,700. And then they need to fill in a questionnaire like, uh, do you have what is the, the this the process to set up a proposal, for example, or an offer? And does the offer address all the twelve policies of the standard? Yes, no. If you tick yes, it's good uh, because that demonstrates is, is is one of the questions you need to tick on yes to receive the the the, the certificate or however we call it that your organization is prepared to deal with the standard. So that is how I would think we could sort out this problem. But that needs to be developed, it needs to be defined, then we need to put our brains together. And um, it, uh, yes, it will help us. It, it sticks a little bit with the, the SOHO project, because in my understanding, it needs to be very easy and if if we if we achieve what we want to achieve to have as many applicant, applicants applicants as possible that might be thousands and we cannot expect from rima or from kusaima to check the the boxes manually and print or and issue the certificate manually it needs to be done automatically including the payment process so if they want to have if they want to have this certificate, if they want to have uh, a, an any e certificate issued by ICMCI in a in an in a official way, they need to pay. And payment process is much more complex than you would imagine. <laughs> so um, that's these two things are a little bit the bottleneck, along with the question: how could this certificate look like specifically? Now for the, the ongoing process by ISO, um, the systematic review process, I wouldn't discuss that in the ISO committee because it doesn't make any sense. We will not achieve that in the ISO committee. We will not achieve a standard that is a mandatory standard. Um, I know if we start the, the uh, process to discuss the standard, that's question number two, what should be, what should be changed in the standard. And if we say it shall be changed and we want certification, um, it is highly, 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 99.99% un unlikely that an ISO standard uh, will be a certified standard as long as it is not a mandatory standard. So it's, I think we should have an, a different approach and the discussion with UNIDO and ISO at the beginning of the week, they said exactly the same. Um, and uh, our approach is we as ICMCI, we issue a certificate. That's my understanding, but I'm open for discussion. If you have any other better ideas, please. No. Uh, please, uh, Mr. Roberts, for our, from our experience here in the Arab world, the certificate from ISO.org, this the organization, is more important than any uh, requirements as only as guidelines or principles. Because if you have uh, guidelines and no certificate, it means nothing. It means only for people who are uh, 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 see that these guidelines is important for them but not for uh, the community. When any consulting uh, firm has uh, this certificate <laughs> as ISO standard, perhaps, and we will work on it, uh, all tenders uh, should put a preferability for people or for consultants who have this certificate. Here, we can move the profession towards because uh, this certificate is very important, but nobody knows the importance of this certificate. This is first. 
Second, the CMC firm. Nobody uh, uh, make any attention in this certificate as uh, uh, based on code of ethics, based on the profession in a good way and uh, credibility uh, and so on. CMC uh, firm also, we have to work on it and our strategy uh, this year and year uh, and the next. Because in the Arab world, for example, there is no any organization has this certificate except our organization, Team International, as I am the GM of it. I, I make it to encourage others, but nobody encouraged <laughs> to have the CMC firm and no any uh, tenders or fund agencies uh, asked any consultants to have this certificate. If we have standards and we have certificate, we can work on it as uh, it is a condition to have uh, any consulting assignment if you have this certificate. Theoretically, what you said is right, but in, in, in these communities, I think, <coughs> sorry, in these communities, the certificate is very important. That's what I see here. Yeah, yeah. the certificate, I think it's in, in, important and we can achieve a certificate. <coughs> And we can achieve a certificate issued by ICMCI, which is a global organization and which is not nobody. But uh, a, a certificate issued by ISO will never happen because ISO doesn't issue any certificates. That The certificates you're talking about in ISO 9001, they are issued by other organizations. But we have it, uh, 2700. Yeah. In advance of it, ISO, that means standards issued by ISO. Yes. So we, we have only to, to transfer requirements, guidelines to be as a standard only. <laughs> it is a standard, yes. This is not easy. Yes, please. Uh, I think uh, Rima raised her hand and then Otto. Well, what I wanted to say is that even though we keep asking for the certificate for the ISO, we haven't yet made the clients more aware of it. And it would be meaningless to have it as a certificate, even we know it's not going to happen, but anyway, to keep asking for it is not the solution, but actually to make sure that our clients understand what the ISO standard is, why it's there, what the 12 uh, steps are, what are the policies that it covers and have the clients ask for a uh, consultant that are trained in ISO is much more important than asking for the certificate at the moment, because we're still trying to establish the knowledge around it. We were successful through the IMCs to reach around 700 consultants for them to know of it, but now it's the time for us to start making aware our clients of what it's all about and encouraging them to seek it. That's one thing. Now, with regards to the CMC firm, Dr. Magbule, um, around four years ago, we actually made it our purpose to promote the CMC firm. Um, it seems that we haven't been successful. Um, I don't know, I don't want to play the blame game, but we were not successful at it. But when the Zoho is set up, when our CRM that Robert was talking about is set up, we would include promotional campaigns through the system and we would focus on the CMC firm as one of them, okay? So let's hope that what we're planning for, uh, for the next three years would meet with, with what you asked for. Thank you. Thank you. First Otto, of all, our members. <laughs> Otto and then Kim, please. First of all, with our members, I meant. Yes, sure. Yeah, sure. <laughs> And, uh, and don't forget, Dr. Magbula, that whatever is done at ICMC I level should be mirrored at the IMC level. So even if we promote among our members who are the IMCs, it's expected that the IMCs would roll out that type of promotion, that type of mailing to their, to their members and to their clients for people to know more about the certificate. If we stop at the level of ICMCI, it, we cannot do it alone. 
Mm. I hope. Okay. Definitely. Hey, Otto, please. Uh, just a couple of things. Um, one is uh, to reinforce what the Rima has just said. I, I was going to say that uh, the ISO and probably the CMC too uh, is going to be moved the lever uh, through um, a marketing campaign directed at the clients because we need to move the requirement from the clients and then that will make move the consultants to, uh, to whatever is standard. Uh, the other thing regarding that is that if we, you know, there I've been involved with some ISO organizations in the past and for standards that do not have a certification as CHIM from ISO, uh, they've created their own. So in my view, because ISO is a public standard, uh, either we do it as a, as a INCMCI or uh, probably uh, we'll start uh, seeing uh, local uh, st developed standards uh, that certify ISO, uh, putting us in a in a in a bad position. So it is better to develop it ourselves as a as a local or as an organization certificate, not ISO. I'm, I'm clear of that. Uh, the the other thing that I wanted to add is something that uh, that Dwight and I are trying to do. Uh, I know I've been, you know, it is in, in the works still, but uh, we are trying to develop ISO training for clients on yes, two levels. Yes. Uh, yes. One is at, at C-suit level, uh, which is basically like a micro training, uh, as you mentioned the other day in the, in the European hub, you know, which is something very short, but something that tells the C-suite what should what should you be expecting from your from your management consulting service provider? You know what are you entitled to ask for, well, whoever you uh, hire. And the second one, which I think is especially important, probably for Africa, for Latin America, and from other undeveloped uh, uh, markets, where consultancy is highly tied to corruption is um, a training for procurement officers, which is, you know, which makes sense for uh, NGOs or government. Usually in the private sector, it doesn't make that much sense, uh, but in, in, in government and public and, and, and NGOs, uh, if we have a training for procurement officers telling, you know, which is more than just telling them uh, the ISO is embedded in procurement know-how and telling them how should you buy this category that is this procurement category that is consulting. You know, what, what are you entitled to ask and what are the best practices to hire that? Uh, that we think uh, will have uh, great um, uh, acceptance in, in, in those markets. Yes, well, thank you for that. It's highly important to, we need to address the clients. And um, I mentioned it many times that we will start to do our marketing activities, addressing, approaching consultants as well as clients. That is. Uh, perhaps something that I forgot is that uh, because you are starting on the next three years, as I understood, with, um, with a campaign that the CRM will enable, um, something that I have been hearing from, from the one-on-one -on -one sessions with my members is that the, the, um, that the marketing assets that we create I'm talking about GI, but I think it is applicable also to ICMCI, uh, are usable by, the, by, by, by them in their local market. So, so what, I am, what is in my plans for, for the marketing assets is that we will probably, uh, some things, not everything, because it is not automated, but uh, we will start publishing in two or three languages, uh, 
uh, you know, the similar thing so that it can be shared uh, in, in, in each member's uh, social media locally. Um, yeah. I think it's important. Yeah, good. Good to hear. Kim, please, you have been waiting so long. No problem. Uh, I think uh, what we are talking about is that uh, there is a lot of management consultants and then there are professional management consultants. My, my uh, love, love topic being a professional management consultant and we have the tools. We have the certificate called CMC and we have the process called uh, ISO 20700 described. So it's a question, how do we use them? And for the first time I have seen, thank you, Selai, very much. I have seen twice your, your uh, presentation of what is included, what is required of a CMC consultant. Until these days, I think we have talked about uh, what the training is of a CMC consultant, but not what is the uh, purpose of the training, what is the requirement of a consultant to become a CMC. So what do the standard, uh, sorry, the certificate include? I think Selai has done an excellent job for us for that discussion with anyone in the world. And of course, then we have the ISO 20700 standard, which is about the process. How is the management consulting process working? What we did in Finland was that uh, we used the ISO 20700 standard, and then we connected a lawyer knowing the Finnish leg legislation, and we made an appendix for the consulting contract of that, which the consultant can use when saying that I am working accordingly to the ISO 20700 standard, here is my contract. This is what it, it, it includes to work accordingly to the ISO 20700, accordingly to the Finnish law. And then we have in the Institute, the ethics committee where the uh, client can complain. So uh, that means that the consultant who is a member of our institute is a controlled consultant. Yeah. And to me, that's simple as it is. We, we don't need anything more. We if just we, need to yeah. utilize them. We, we might need a little bit more, but if as long as we don't have these basics you mentioned, we don't need to discuss about the rocket science beyond that. So uh, I, I agree that covers something like 80% of the, of the requirements. We might not achieve 100%, which is okay. But uh, these things are very, they can be implemented quite easy. It is uh, really in practical life of, of a consultant to set up the proposal according to 20,700, that's it. And he can write it in, it, in, the, in the proposal, that's it. This proposal is set up according to 20,700, I do it. And it's, it, it, uh, some people say, I don't care. Some people say, what is 20,700? And then you explain and then they say, okay, so I can be sure that what you propose me is covering everything that is necessary for the consulting project. Maybe I forgot something, but then it is clear that I forgot something. And it's transparent and, and many people, especially in, in, the, in, uh, in, the, um, in the official side, the government or administration side, they really uh, appreciate that. Yes, and to me, it gives also the role to the uh, National Institute because the National Institute is controlling the consultant who is a member of the National Institute. So there is also a, co a complaint uh, a, a process available yes. and a control process available for the consultants who are members of the National Institute. Nobody yeah, that, else. That closes the loop. It's exactly. Uh, yeah. Now, um, Rima, please. I just want to tell Kim that after we finish the future of consulting webinars in October, I'm going to start mm -hmm. a new series of webinars about best practices for IMCs. And I'm going to contact him for a session on that. Good. 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 Yes. yes. I want to uh, tell a story. I have. Uh, 
I told this story quite often, so maybe you, I'm boring you or some of you, but especially to uh, uh, Makbule, um, it is, I, um, there is a, a German consultant, a, a she, uh, and she is delivering projects somewhere in Africa. Um, and the donor organization asked her to uh, sign that she is working according to 20,700. Good. And then she asked the, the BDU, the German Consulting uh, un, Union, uh, BDU, that, that's the German IMC, and said, what do I need to do? And they said, we don't know because we do not do have any activities uh, according to the activities of ICMCI to promote the standard. So the first effect was that the BDU heard maybe the first time, but they heard it that there are clients asking for that. The second effect is they said, okay, please go to the ICMCI. They sent her to Rima and to me, uh, parallel. <laughs> so we both uh, replied parallel <laughs> uh, to the lady and we provided the appropriate information. And now she can uh, answer and reply to this donor organization. I am working according to 20,700, very easy. But that is what we actually want to achieve. We want to have the clients demanding for 20,700. And therefore we do not need any certifications, but we need to educate the client, the, the consultants, because if we would turn it around and first the clients ask, and then nobody can answer because the consultants say, I've never heard about that. And they can, nobody, nobody could help them like this lady in Germany. Uh, and yeah. then it would be the, the wrong direction. It needs to be the opposite. First, we need to train the, the consultants then make awareness uh, on the client side, train the consultants, awareness on the client side. And that is something in the loop that will uh, revolve, I don't know, endless. So uh, that's, um, uh, it's, it's, not, it's not answering all your questions, but it's a story I like to tell because I think uh, it's proving that we are going in the right direction. Uh, Robert? Yes, uh, I just would like to add that in all of these, uh, the role of IMCs is very critical, instrumental. Yeah. Yes, because in many, in many IMCs, um, they would not be able to deal with the situation. <laughs> yeah, unfortunately. Okay, well, um, thank you. We are at the end of our time. It was a little bit... Uh, um, creative presentation <laughs> approach, but according to the people who are attending, I thought it's a little bit bet, um, um, to, to be a little bit more flexible and agile. Uh, it's better than to have the standard presentation. I hope I didn't forget something critical. If you have any more questions, I should answer quick, please. I have, uh, excuse, excuse me, I have just to comment on uh, Kim, what was Kim do, uh, saying. <clears throat> do you mean that it was mandatory now? Is it mandatory now to have this standard or is it still going here and there? Kim. Uh, mandatory to have the standard? Yeah, yeah. Is it mandatory to have this, the standard for the <clears throat> consultant or the the CMC firms or whatever, is it, is it mandatory now to have the standard, the ISO standard? The first question, of course, is um, to the Institute. Do your Institute recommend your members to follow the ISO 20,700 standard and, and announce that they are following it, uh, which would, of course, be uh, the first step in order for the consultants to be able to be controlled uh, consultants. Yeah. Because that creates the framework for the co controlling of their process. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, thank you. Just want to, to see if it was mandatory. Want to, I want to know how it came mandatory so we can learn about it. <laughs> but still need time, I believe. In Finland, it is a recommendation for it's our recommendation. members to yeah. announce that uh, they follow the ISO standard, but uh, we have enhanced that by offering them uh, 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 attend, uh, uh, 
attachment to the contract, which is built on the ISO 20700 uh, standard accordingly to our legislation. Yes, yeah, okay, thank you. Still, 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 I believe if it is not mandatory and no uh, ISO certificate, it will be like uh, optional and nobody come to have this uh, requirements as guidelines. If it, it is still guidelines, that means we cannot move forward. So please, I, I see that in the Arab world, especially, or in the Middle East, I think all over the world, like uh, when, when we uh, uh, starting the ISO 9000 in 94 or 93 in, uh, in our countries, because it is a certificate uh, and international standards, people go to, to have this certificate. And when, uh, once, yani after a, a special yani period, uh, it was uh, demanded because uh, most of uh, funds or uh, clients asked if you have ISO certificate, you can uh, submit your proposal for any consulting management. But now the good people or not good people go as consultants and uh, take all uh, assignments without code of ethics, without uh, a 2700, without any, because it is not mandatory and no international certificate. ISO not like ICMCI still now. This is uh, true. Uh, when we say ISO organization, people say, oh, well, yes, give us the requirements or give us the certificate. But when we say we are in International Council for Management Consulting and ICMCI and this is uh, the umbrella for all consulting firms, blah, blah, blah. They said, what is this? It is not like PMP, for example. They asked for PMP officially now, but not for CMC, neither CMC for individual or CMC for. So we face such difficulties in, in this uh, area to move our profession uh, towards. But uh, I don't know, Yani. I like what Robert said, but this is, for me, is theoretical in our world. Yeah, I, I fully understand. And I think all of us, we do understand the situation and we do understand that it might help in, 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 in different uh, regions in the world. It might be different, of course. Um, but it's like, uh, we would like, uh, uh, to cancel gravity, uh, it will not happen. It's we need to uh, live with that. It is the situation for the time being. We might have a process then when we have the next um, uh, systematic review process in the next five years that we try to put our influence and to lobby in a specific direction. It will be very, very complicated and with a high risk, but we might think about that for the time being. I don't think it we will have a chance to make this standard mandatory. But I do understand you. And I would love to give you the answer you want to hear from us. Mm -hmm. um, like, okay, we, we sent to reply, we sent and reply and uh, the situation is sorted out. I would love to do that. <laughs> but but um, to be honest, it's not realistic. So let's do that. The, the thing that is not the best, but the second best. And the second best is to promote the, the certificate, to promote to the clients, to aver make, create awareness from the client side. Yes, we do that. And we do that. that will be the first step to make the, mandat the standard mandatory, because if the clients push on the ISO organization, the ISO organization might change. I don't know, but it's more likely than if the consultants push the, the ISO, the ISO uh, organization. Client here, price oriented. If you have your yeah, okay, <laughs> okay, <laughs> okay. What a wonderful closing word. <laughs> Thank you for attending. Have a wonderful 
day, night, evening, morning, whatever. Thank you for joining and looking forward to see you soon. The latest in the annual conference.